Hello everyone, it's Dark City here again. Welcome back to another video. Just casually lightning storming there. Just doing our thing with a board that is ridiculously full here. Uh, two Storm Guardians on board. Sneed's old shredder that gives us Hogger. Wow. Um, yeah. I'd say this game is pretty much in hand. 28 health. Our healing waves are redundant here. And we've got to win this game because our friend there, Duckers, is, is spectating for the pack. So we've got to win it for him. Yeah, and a priest that plays two weapon destruction cards when there is no weapon in hand or equipped. Well, that's pretty desperate, right? So, I guess... All you do now is just go face and win the game. Yeah. I dedicate this game to Duckles and his pack. And that was a pretty sweet victory, which takes us to 500 wins. 500 wins, very nice. Okay, so... Basking in the glow, the golden glow of uh, 500 wins there. Let's have a look at this deck. Um, <clears throat> it's CPWE94's uh, Shaman, and um, what's the core mechanic behind this deck? Well, basically, Ancestral Spirit, Reincarnate are your two key cards that you will play on certain minions. So, Ancestral Spirit on an Earth Elemental, <clears throat> when it's killed, it will come back to life, be resummoned on the board. Reincarnate will destroy uh, a minion and then return it back to life. It's really, really good with Kel'Thuzad on board, um, or with Sylvanas, for example. There is healing in the deck, healing wave. So against aggro classes, <clears throat> you can um, <clears throat> you can heal out of lethal range. Farsight draws you a card and reduces the cost, so you're drawing into those big threats and reducing the cost of them. Death Rattle minions like White Eyes, uh, Double Sludge Belcher, Sylvanas, Sneeds, who all come back to life with Nazoth the Corrupter. And you got some AoE too, double Maelstrom Portal, double Lightning Storm to keep those aggro decks at bay. And <coughs> let's not forget Barnes. Barnes is in this deck, and Barnes getting you a 1-1 copy of Sneed's Old Shredder is pretty insane. Uh, you can then play Ancestral Spirit or reincarnate on those 1-1 Death Rattle minions, and it is just obscene. Um, so, we're going to have a look at this deck in action. It is wild mode. Um, because, of course, we are playing cards like Sludge Belcher that have rotated out, for example, and Kel'Thuzad. Uh, but this is a really fun deck to play. Needs a little bit of luck with your draws sometimes, but with the healing potential, it can be really hard to die. So, we're going up here against another Shaman. And this kind of a deck that we're playing here with Reincarnate and Ancestral Spirit... It's not a deck that you see played very often on the ladder, so no one really expects it. Volcano is another really good AoE card in this deck, so that lets you survive for a little bit longer too. So, we're starting out here, we've got nothing to do on this initial turn, but it's just worth scoping out what lies ahead for us. Uh, Devolve is in our hand, we have Maelstrom Portal to deal with some low health minions that get played. Um, he's taking things slowly too. Okay, nothing to do. And often with this deck, you'll find that there is nothing to do for several turns. So you just hero power, hero power, hero power. Until maybe we get to turn four, where we can coin out a Belcher or White Eyes. <clears throat> Interesting. Devolve. Number two. Huh. Um, 
I don't see a significant play here that we can make unless we want to hex the two three. Hmm. hmm. So we could just hero power here. Okay. So next turn it will be coin belcher or coin white eyes. Now the question is which minion do you want to commit to a hex? Because let's face it, there is a very good chance. He's an elemental shaman, there's a very good chance he has hex in hand. They always do, right? They always do against your first big mm. threat. Your first big minion that you play, they always have it. <clears throat> How much will he commit? He doesn't know what kind of a shaman I am yet. He doesn't know what kind of a deck I'm playing. We haven't revealed very much. For all he knows, I could just be a, an elemental deck that's drawn very badly. Now, oh god. Right, okay, that was awkward. Devolve was played there just to deny him the value on the death battle. Okay. And we had to play it again. Now that feels incredibly wasteful. Double devolve. But I didn't want to leave a 2-6 minion with taunt on the board. Um, it was almost as if the, the, the second board state that he had after playing the first evolve was a better board state than what he originally had. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. Uh, anyway. We have Maelstrom Portal now. That's good. But... There is an egg on board, and playing Maelstrom would summon a minion, which we don't want. We could have rolled for spell power, but there's no guarantee we'd get it. So there's the hex on the Sludge Belcher, and one out of two hexes has now been used. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that, because it now frees up white eyes to come down. One of the things you've got to be scared of here is a wide board state. And bloodlust is a very real possibility. Now, because we've seen a hex, I'm feeling that Ancestral Spirit is a worthy gamble to take here. If he has the second hex in hand, we're really sad and we quite possibly lose the game. Just because he deals with the minion very easily, probably plays a, a, a minion of his own on the board as well, goes face, bloodlusts in two turns and wins the game. Maybe. But I have Volcano. Okay, Fire Elemental. At least we get the Storm Guardian back into our deck. But most importantly, My life is your White Eyes comes back to life. And that's the power of Ancestral Spirit. So reincarnate here doesn't really do anything. Um, what I could do is I could just hex the Fire Ellie. That's a possibility here. Um... Mm. Yeah, I should have done that first. I should have played Ancestral Knowledge first. In fact, it wouldn't have changed anything. It was very unlikely to have changed anything, because that's to remove the six damage from the board. Uh, but yeah, I should have drawn cards first. That was a bit of a misplay, a bit of an ordering issue for me there. I didn't think about it. Um, I was just simply focused on getting rid of the Fire Elemental. Um, but okay, <clears throat> we're in an okay position here. This is my inexperience of playing this deck showing here. Um, that's pretty good for him. Maelstrom Portal, okay. Two Storm Guardians in our deck. Once those start coming down, it will probably spell game over for him, unless he has another Hex. Um, Lightning Storm. Seems pretty decent, right? <clears throat> so, if we Lightning Storm, what else are we going to do? There isn't anything else we can do. So, you roll for the Spell Power Totem, we don't get it, which is unfortunate. So now we just have to hope 
with the flame tongue totem guys. And it does. For once, we roll high on the lightning storm and we actually get rid of the flame tongue. That's pretty good. <clears throat> so this is an elemental deck that we're facing off against and so we've got to be cautious of Servant of Kalimos into something crazy, uh, be cautious of Kalimos himself, of Blazecaller, these are the cards you want to watch out for. Sludge Belcher on the board, so if it dies, well, and doesn't get hexed, and the Zoth the Corrupter comes back, uh, brings Belcher back, that's pretty good. So, Blaze Caller is one of the cards we were afraid of, there it is. Here's the hex. Do we do it? Do we hex that? I think we do. Spell power. Does that change anything? We can remove three things from that board, including a healing totem. Oh, we get a haha. -ha. Okay, sure. So the injured taunt totem is protecting the rest of our board here. Although he could have some more AoE, which would actually be quite good for him. Brothers, oh, Servant of Kalimos. Okay. Sure. Oh wow, the healing value. The hot spring guardian healing the hot spring guardian. Wow. Okay, well, maybe we just volcano this. Um, or play Barnes instead. What does Barnes give us? Maybe we get something good. That's good. That's really, really good. Okay. Let's bring it back to life. And get the Faux Reaper! Wow! That's insane! Talk about an, an easy way of clearing board. That Faux Reaper will hit a minion, but also damage adjacent minions as well. That's pretty insane. That's great value from Sneeds. How does he deal with this board? Over the course of one turn, Sneed's old Shredder is on the board at full health, and there is a Foe Reaper on the board. He uses the second Hex, strangely, on the Foe Reaper and not on Sneed's. He was more scared of the Foe Reaper, seemingly, but actually, no, he's in the Lightning Storm, so he wants a board clear. Oh, wow, that's good. That's really good. No dragons in hand, and I think he knows that this is not a deck that plays dragons. Uh, but he's going to have to do some trading. Okay, let's get the order correct this time. Card draw first. <laughs> oh, wow. There's Kel'Thuzad. Can we do it? I think we do. Minions, servants, soldiers of the cold dark. That is the best entrance in the entire game. Obey the call of Kel'Thuzad. Two hexes gone. What's he going to do against KT? Oh, that's good. Come on. Kill the torps. Ha! <laughs> that's really good. Oh, yeah. It's over. With Kel'Thuzad on board and with no direct answer to him, it is game over. KT is your MVP in this deck. Okay. We've just beaten an elemental deck and now we're going up against a hunter. So we can expect a little bit more aggression and I'm struggling a little bit with the mulligans here. Uh, Farsight is a card that you really, really want to draw if you can in the early game. Oh, look! There it is! <laughs> it can mean the difference between having... Oh, that's good. Between having uh, an early to mid-game presence on the board and not having it. Playing Farsight and discounting Sylvanas by three or discounting a Belcher by three is insane. Oh, 
Okay, that's really good. Maelstrom Portal. And the 1-1 one -one totem is even better. It actually contests his Fari Bat. That's actually so important for gaining tempo. Oh. Is he going to kill it? You really should. Oh. It goes face. It's greedy. It's so greedy. Because now I'm just going to decimate the board. Who knows? If he had traded into my 1-1 one -one and buffed up his Hyena, maybe he'd be winning this game right now. In fact, it probably would have been a game-winning play. Without Hex, I probably wouldn't be able to deal with that Hyena for, for two turns. You know, until White Eyes comes down. Or Sylvanas, but... Who knows? Getting that damage in over two turns from the Hyena may have been game-winning, but... I can understand why he went face. He was gambling on the fact that I couldn't deal with the Hyena. So... Do we just play her? Or do we play White Eyes here? Or do we just card draw? Card draw first, yes. I'm, I'm starting to learn my lesson. Draw first, then do stuff. Yeah. Sylvanas now on board. How does he get through her? He doesn't have access to anything like Hex. All he can do is go wide on the board and consider trading. Or do what he's doing right here, which is uh, buff up his minions, go face, and hope and pray for the best. Because that is the best solution against Sylvanas. If you can't deal with her effectively, you ignore her usually. Oh my goodness, lightning storm. Do we do it? I think we do. It kills the hyena, which I think is probably the most important thing to do here. And <clears throat> I'm actually pondering a trade here. Uh, I'm actually pondering a trade. And I'll tell you why I'm doing this. It just means it's going to die. Uh, and he may actually now consider trading it into Sylvanas. Yes, he does. Rather than going face with it. If he went face with that, I could, I could be in trouble. That's a lot of damage that he'd be doing. So that slowed him down a little bit. Wow, look at him go here. It's only turn six. And the amount of stuff that he's played is insane. Um, So we're trying to survive here now. We only have 14 health. That's negligible. White Eye is now in the way. <clears throat> we're hoping that there's no kill command. Interesting. Values the card draw. Oh, that's painful for him. Two minions are having to trade in there. That's good for me. Painful for him. Hey, we're surviving. We are finding a way to survive. And the consideration now has to be made for Volcano. <clears throat> it is either Volcano or it's Healing Wave. Um... Let's see how much we heal for here. Oh, that's good. We get the full, the full value. Nice. Uh, because if it didn't work out, then I would have considered Volcano. But because we healed for the full amount that was possible, we played Barnes. Uh, I was hoping for something else from Barnes there, but it's fine still. We're at 25. There is a taunt there that's going to block two damage. That's good. And he's going ultra, ultra wide on the board. And on that note, well, I think it's probably game over for him now. Volcano in this kind of a situation is so good. Oh, that's so good too. I could just play that. <laughs> he has 13 health on his side of the board and Volcano deals 15. So if I want to guarantee a board clear, I'd have to trade first, right? On Into something to, uh, to increase my chances of a board clear. Um, 
with the show. Yeah, just to be absolutely safe, we want to kill that five health in here. So we do, we do it like this. Oh, I clearly didn't learn my lesson. I should have drawn first. <laughs> Wouldn't have changed a thing, though. Wouldn't have changed a thing. But there we go. Take down the hunter. Nice. Okay, we'll look at one final game, and it's against a warrior here. Keeping the Belcher there is good. Um, Hex could be decent if it's Taunt Warrior. Um, why is the Sludge Belcher so important here? It's because if this is Pirate Warrior, you need some way to survive. It is Pirate Warrior. Okay, Sludge Belcher is probably going to be a game-saving turn. Uh, on turn five. Uh, actually, having said that, Volcano will probably be a viable turn five play, but it depends on how much this dude commits to the board here. <clears throat> wow. Frothing Berserker. Well, thankfully we have Hex. And we're just going to stop his aggro in its tracks. In its tracks here. Barnes could be a viable turn four play. Trust the pirate's code. South Sea Captain. That's nasty. Come on, Barnes. Give me something good. Yeah, I'll take that. <laughs> That's pretty good. Unless it gives you a, a bad legendary, which does happen from time to time. Wow, he's thinking of popping it. <clears throat> no, he's just changed his plan. Yes, this is like the Sylvanas play. If in doubt, ignore and go face. And he's doing just that. Wow. I'm down to 16 health. Oh, that's interesting. Is that a play here? Is that a play? Or do we just volcano the board away? No. I, I think... On with the show. This is fine. And we get a taunt! And we get a taunt. Wow. Blocking the path again. So... <clears throat> we've played Volcano. We're going to be overloaded for two. Still have Devolve in hand. Which could be really good against another Frothing Berserker, for example. Um, now we could make a sneaky play here. We could make a really sneaky play. Or we could go face and then reincarnate the Taunt. So he'd theoretically have to double trade. But no, draw first. That's fine. We... we We'll get better value on Reincarnate, right? Maybe Reincarnate on Sludge Belcher, because that gives us um, a slime as well. So, two torques essentially on board. Oh, come on, are you serious? Devolve into shit's cannon. Wow. <laughs> so I had to commit an awful lot there. I committed Lightning Storm and Devolve just to remove two three fours. But I see it as important because my health total is so low. Um, I'm at ten and I have no healing in hand, so <clears throat> we're in danger of dying if we're not careful. We've now got to be conscious of Mortal Strike, Heroic Strike, etc. One man is short, and we, we can't play the Earth Ellie, but okay. I don't think he can kill us from hand here. Double Mortal Strike wouldn't be wouldn't be enough here. It'd be four damage and four damage, that's eight. Now he'd be two off. And that slime is in the way. Wow, what's he doing? Did he have to equip the weapon there? He could have just heroic striked. 
That didn't make any sense. He got the ordering wrong. He could have heroic striked, then equipped, and he'd have a three charge weapon now. Yeah, that was a mistake. Um, so now we put the Earth Ellie in the way, and next turn we have another Earth Elemental. I don't see how he breaks through this. Blood and plunder. Is that a mortal strike? No, ice lance. Wow. Hmm. Uh, that's not really going to do much for him here. We'll just play another one. So as long as these taunts are in the way, we are protected from being killed here by a double mortal strike and something else. Blood and plunder. Obviously, if he was able to get his health total low enough where Mortal Strike does 6 damage, then we die to double Mortal Strike. My life is but, we'll just continue building the wall. There's our wall of taunts. Four taunts on the board. How do you get through that? There's a haha. -ha. Okay, the haha -ha kills the weakest taunt. They have 20 damage on board. Yeah, that's worthy of a screenshot. 20 damage. Um, we can draw into something. Eh. That doesn't do anything, but. It's alright, I guess. Um, healing would have been nice. I mean, again, what am I scared of here, though? Uh, what I'm scared of is his health total going down too low so that double mortal strike does 12 damage. That's what I'm afraid of. So we need to plan for that. So if I... He's got 26 health. I've 19 damage on the board. I can afford to hit him once. I have no time for and I will pass because I'm afraid of him doing damage to his own face by trade by putting his face into one of my minions and then activating some kind of double mortal strike shenanigans. Yeah, so we played it uber safe there against the warrior. And we came out on top. So, yeah, CPW94 uh, and his Shaman. It's a fun deck to play. I'm just trying to get to grips with this deck, hence why some of the plays that I would have made may have been slightly inefficient there in those last three games. But it's a deck that um, has great staying power. Uh, and with cards like Kel'Thuzad, which you saw in action, cards like Ancestral Spirit, Reincarnate, it's a deck that will stand the test of time across a lengthy game. You do have to be selective, though, with when you use your cards like Reincarnate and Ancestral Spirit, because, you know, it's wild mode, and classes have full access to cards. So, for example, you know, Priest... Shadow of Death, Entomb, you know, these are these are cards that you want to be wary of. Uh, Hex is another card you want to be wary of. And at the same time, you know, there's cards like Light Bomb, cards that rotated out of Standard into Wild, and you've got to play around certain things. Do you want to overcommit with your big threats, um, or do you want to play it safe and hold a couple back? Uh, so, you know, Sylvanas into a light bomb where there's nothing to steal would be an absolute waste. So, you've got to keep those considerations in mind. But I hope you enjoyed the video, and um, if you've got the cards, give this deck a try on the ladder and tell me what you think. Uh, but for the time being, that's us done for this video, and um, I'll see you all again very soon for more Hearthstone fun with Standard Mode or Wild Mode.